Can you talk a little bit about the spiritual aspect of uh, massage therapy? Yes, absolutely. And every and many emotions are expressed on through the form of massage therapy. And what happens with massage therapy, there is a lot of fluid movement in our bodies while we are receiving the massage. And there are four chemicals in the body. These are the happy chemicals in the bodies that are called dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Mm -hmm. Specifically, serotonin and endorphins, these are mood enhancers and mood stabilizers. Welcome to American Gypsy Podcast. I'm your host, Gypsy. And today I have a special guest, Blanca Rodriguez. She is the CEO of Wounded Healer, um, massage therapist, both human and pets, uh, podcaster, but, uh, Amazon bestselling author, and holistic life coach. Welcome to the show, Blanca. Thank you so much for having me, Gypsy. What a joy it is for me to be here. Glad to have you here. Um, <clears throat> you do so many different things. Can you give us an insight into your background and how all of these things um, kind of came together and what you do today? Oh, yeah, absolutely, Gypsy. Thank you so much for asking. Since I was a little girl, I've been always into helping, being the little girl that wanted to help everybody that wants to learn, super curious. And well, like they say around, curiosity killed the cat, but I am that cat that didn't get killed over curiosity. So that is a good one. I'm an animal lover. I've always been an animal lover. I love dogs specifically. And as I kept on growing up, I said to myself, I want to help others feeling better, to feel better, to improve their quality of life. And that's when after quite a few uh, careers that I had in the hotel industry, I've been a dancer for almost 40 years. I, I was a teacher, fitness teacher back in the 90s. I've been into fitness for many, many years. And the results of having good physical activity, they are absolutely wonderful from little kids all the way to the elderly. So I have taught to every single age group there is. And that was definitely the beginning of what I do now, all the hats that I wear. Later on in my late 30s, at 38 years old, I went back to school for to become a licensed massage therapist. And that opened a whole new door to holistic life approach to wellness. So I started integrating my group fitness instruction with massage therapy. And that's when I learned about canine massage therapy. So I threw myself fully into that as well because I love dogs and I know that the healing powers of massage therapy are real. It's a practice that has been around for thousands of years and I didn't know that canine massage therapy has been around for thousands of years as well, just like human massage. So I definitely, I dived in into that. And then after that, holistic life coaching, which I do today. And all of these hats definitely took me on this beautiful journey that I call helping others improve their quality of life, no matter what age they are, no matter what age we are actually. I'm in the middle of my menopause and thanks to living a healthier lifestyle, being physically active, doing classes, speaking engagement, writing a chapter in a book, it keeps me going and going and going and rolling and aging gracefully, like they say. And I love the concept of aging gracefully, not only in the sense of, oh, I look good. It's like, yeah, I like that, but I rather feel good instead of really looking good because when we feel good, we look good no matter what. So all of these hats that I wear 
has been part of a journey of everything that I do today in a whole. So it's a holistic approach to a better lifestyle, definitely. And that's how everything just started blossoming into what I'm doing today. Can you talk a little bit about the spiritual aspect of uh, massage therapy? Because I feel like there's been times where I've gotten a massage and I felt like um, an emotional release after. Um, I just wanted to pick your brain on what you thought about that and talk with Lori. Yes, yes, absolutely. And depending on our state of mind and how we are emotionally as we receive a massage, it can bring out many things. I have had people on the table that they cry. I have been people on the table that they start laughing and every and many emotions are expressed on through the form of massage therapy. And what happens with massage therapy, there is a lot of fluid movement in our bodies while we are receiving the massage. And there are four chemicals in the body. These are the happy chemicals in the bodies that are called dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Specifically, serotonin and endorphins, these are mood enhancers and mood stabilizers. They are, they are in combination with the brain and the gut. And when massage therapy is happening, the effects starting with the gut branching out are very, very powerful. So there's many people that have, uh, for example, post-traumatic stress disorder. I work on a lot of patients that they have PTSD, depression, anxiety, all of these things, and they put in full manifestation. They just let go because it's a full releaser of, it's an emotional release, so to speak, through massage therapy, depending on what type of skill is being provided to them, depending on how they are feeling at that moment before they got on the table, things can get in full manifestation. I have had uh, especially women that were sexually assaulted in the past, that they can go into a full emotional release and they start crying and crying when I am working specifically in the lower back area because it's reflected on the front, which is our reproductive system. So it makes total sense that people get emotional, happy, sad. And I have a lot of people, thousands of people later that all I have to say, so how are you feeling today? And they just say it all. And they are in a safe space. They yeah. are in a safe place where they can trust the massage therapist that they that this is a confidential area where whatever happens in this room won't get out of this room unless the client or patient decides to share with someone else yes but never from the massage therapist that is totally prohibited and that's why they may feel this comfort on letting it out because probably they don't feel comfortable or safe anywhere else to express it so yes it makes total sense that emotional getting emotional happens and yes spiritually massage therapy can really help to rebalance your body so that's why chemicals are involved emotions get involved because of course these chemicals the levels are going up 30 percent and the mood stabilizer which is the serotonin and the mood enhancer which are the endorphins are going to get in full function in there and that's when there's vulnerability that can happen authenticity you let things out and it's perfectly okay it's okay to get a massage and cry during the massage laugh during the massage and there's nothing wrong with it i have seen it all to be honest with you and it's all good it's 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 really really powerful and it makes me happy that and and i'm not on i'm not the only massage therapist that feels this way it makes me happy that my clients trust me with their vulnerability. It's very special to me, very dear to me. 
Yeah, I thought it was a one-off when it happened once, but it happened a few times and then I noticed it. But it's interesting that you mentioned like a specific part of your body triggering a certain trauma. What um, what are the different areas of the body that can potentially trigger a certain? Definitely with sexual assault survivors. I'm a sexual assault survivor myself and some movements can trigger i mean these are things that are in the subconscious that consciously you don't even know this is going to happen but it has happened to women that they get triggered especially when uh when i have been through I go to their lower backs and then, of course, the glute area. I always do compressions very respectfully because it's an area of the body where there's a lot of pain that is reflecting from the back. It goes down to the glutes and it can go down to the upper leg and even down to the feet. And depending on what happened to this individual Triggers can happen. I had I had this young lady that she got triggered because I was massaging her ankles. Mm. And she even apologized that she the, she jumped and I was like, Are you okay? Did I hurt you? And she's like, No, you didn't hurt me. But it took me to a memory uh, that I really didn't want to happen. I didn't want to remember this. And it took me to this place. And I'm like, Well, thank you for trusting me with your story. You didn't have to tell me anything. She wasn't under no obligation to tell me nothing. I would just, it's like, okay, if you don't want me to massage an area, just let me know if you don't feel comfortable, because that's, that's the beauty of massage therapy. If you don't feel comfortable with something, you go ahead and say it out loud and the massage therapist will never be offended over it. But I had this, this woman, lovely lady that she was triggered because I was massaging her ankles and something happened with her experience that the ankles were, that her feet were involved in whatever situation she went through. So it's really, you know, it, it varies a lot from person to person to what happened to them. Some some people are with their necks, with with their with their necks. It's like I had this lady, I, I work in two rehab centers for drug addiction and alcohol abuse. And one lady, she was like, please, be ge very gentle with my neck because my ex-husband used to choke me and she had damage to her trachea because he used to choke her over and over and over and over till she passed out and it was repeatedly and she had not only the physical trauma but of course she had the emotional and mental trauma of those experiences and she will be very honest and very open about it she's like no i had an abusive husband and he will always be choking me so please be gentle with my neck. Okay, not a problem. Do you want me to avoid your neck? No, 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 no. I'm good. Just be gentle. Okay. But this varies from person to person. And that's why massage therapy is so powerful, not only for relaxation, muscle spasms, migraines, etc., but it can trigger and it can bring many memories back from, um, from things that have uh, happening with them in the past so yeah it's a it can be a delicate situation but we are ready for it and uh as we go in our careers it's really helpful and of course it's an honor for me and a joy to help out because i've been there myself and we can maybe share something that can make the patient feel better when they get off the table and say, okay, this person is trustworthy and it's good. It's all good. Now with animals, um, what are reasons why people bring their animals for a therapy? What does it help with? Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, the almost the sim very similar effects that massage therapy has in us humans, it has in our dogs. Canine massage therapy has been around since 2800 BC, actually. It's wow. a very ancient practice. It started in China, and of course, it came all over to the Americas in the 1970s. So here in the U.S., it's a pretty 
very recent practice, but it's not that recent at all. It all started with equine massage, massage for horses, and it got to be very well known in the equine industry. And then not long after it became a massage therapy was introduced to the U.S. And the, it's a very similar practice because dogs and us humans, we are mammals. We have organs, body systems. We have muscle groups. We have feelings, emotions, chemical reactions. We are very, very similar, but of course, different. We walk in our two feet and animals walk in their four legs. So their anatomy and the gravity of their bodies is very different. But the muscle groups are there. And just like us, that we get spasms, that we get pain, arthritis, uh, aging animals spe specifically, they have they get hip issues depending on the breed of the dog. So that's when massage to become is a very powerful practice for a better quality of life for our dogs. I have massage and I, I've been a canine massage therapist for nine years already, and I have massage all from puppies all the way to end of life. And it's a very powerful practice. It relaxes the dog and makes the dog better. It, and hey, let's face it, the dog deals with us all the time. When we get angry, when we get sad, the dog is there for us. And in many instances, the dog has a sedentary lifestyle. The dog doesn't hardly goes out just to do their business to go to the bathroom and straight back inside. So for dogs that have a sedentary lifestyle, massage therapy is highly recommended because muscle atrophy happens because of lack of movement. And then we go to the other side, which is agility dog, agility competition. With, and these dogs are hyper and they hurt themselves while, while in practice. So this is why even the AKC American Kennel Club approve of the practices of canine massage therapy because of the powerful benefits and better quality of life for the whole life of the animal. So canine massage therapy is something that I just have the honor to do. I work on my beautiful dogs and we're not just, I'm not just a massage therapist and the dog is a dog. We are in a very strong bond. We adore each other. When I, they see that car coming in and because I go to the dog's house, that's where they are comfortable the most. So when they hear my car in the parking, they go crazy happy because the massage therapist is coming with treats so it's a double a double whammy of goodness for them so yes that's uh there's powerful benefits for canine massage therapy just like us humans it's wonderful for mass muscle atrophy it's wonderful post for post-surgical it's amazing for temper issues for separation anxiety when there is storms here in florida we are in the lightning capital of the world here and dogs very get very very terrified of storms of bets and being exposed to environments that they are not used to and this is when canine massage therapy is very very powerful and it keeps them being as wonderful as they are always all of them mm, yeah and how did you evolve into um, holistic life coaching and what is all involved into, uh, into that? Yes, absolutely. Well, holistic life coaching, I, I evolved into it and I didn't even know it consciously, but as part of my massage therapy career, I have, I mean, I've been almost 20 years doing massage therapy. I'm a medic. I'm, my specialty is more of in the medical wellness aspect of massage therapy rather than the spa industry aspect of massage therapy. So people will just start asking me many questions and I'll give recommendations. A lot of people will tell me the stories and I will ask them, do you want to hear my opinion about it? And they will say, yes, sure. So that was like the beginning. And I didn't know consciously that this will, that 
this practice will take me directly into holistic life coaching. And when I discovered life coaching, it was me being coached. So I have a life coach as well. I've been with a life coach for almost three years already. And when I started to see the benefits, to live the benefits, to really dive into how good, how great coaching is for my life, I said to myself, I want to get certified to be a life coach as well. And I can integrate more of this wellness, holistic wellness approach into my practice. So is another ramification besides the licensed massage therapy, besides being a speaker, an educator, a canine massage therapist, a fitness instructor for so long, holistic life coaching. I said, this is a no brainer for me. So I got certified. I have quite a bit of life coaching clients and no life coaching is not counseling life coaching is i'm there for you and if you want some goals done i'm gonna help you through them by being in uh, amongst other things your accountability partner i'm going to hold you accountable for the changes that you want to make but if the client thinks that the life coach is going to fix their lives. That is not true. We fix our lives. But when you have the help of a coach, it's like a coach for a football team, a coach for a basketball player, a coach for celebrities and movie stars that to this day, they still have an acting coach because they see things that the actor may not see for them to improve. So this is the same exact approach for life coaching. Your coach can will help you improve, but you do the work, the heavy work you do, and the coach will be there for you and with you every step of the way to give you encouragement, to give you support, to help you pave the way for better things to come. That is the power of life coaching. I absolutely love it, enjoy it, embrace it. And not because I'm a life coach, and it's because it, that's the way it started with me. I've been coach, and that's how I decided to get into the practice of and get, get certified in life coaching. I'm certified with the Anthony Robbins group and it was, it's one of the best investments I ever done in my life. And when we invest on ourselves, that's the best investment there is. And I keep on investment on having a life coach because it's an investment for myself to have an accountability partner that helps me to reach those goals that maybe I just, won't be able to do on my own. So it's a beautiful thing. I highly recommend it to everybody. Yeah, definitely. Do you help people with personal or uh, professional? Uh, everything. Everything. Things? Personal, professional, childhood trauma, family, financial, any financial goals that they may have, family goals that they may have, anything. Every, anything and everything. Even... Uh, the, if the family is going through some turmoil, I am here to help them. If the family members are willing to have a group coach, a group coaching, I am more than willing to help them through whatever challenge they may have. Because in many instances, this is what happens. Uh, when there's family issues, we go to other family members to tell them about it. And of course, there's the siding with, which side do I take this, this one side or the other side? And this is when life coaching comes into play. It's like, no, we are not taking sides here. We want you guys to fix your problem. And, and we want you guys to work together as a team to improve your relationship. So that's why coaching is so important and so beneficial to, for any aspect of life, actually. Yeah. What is the most like common challenge that you that people face? Many people 
have faced the challenge of getting organized, actually getting organized and have more calendar optimization. What do they want to do? There's, I, I had a client that he was totally lost on how to start his day. He would tell me, I don't know how to start my day. I start my day like I'm in a, uh, in, in, a, in a mood and I'm in a cloud and he doesn't know how to snap out of that cloudy mindset that he has in the morning. It takes him hours to do so. And of course, I gave my recommendations and it's not only the recommendations that I give. It's like, are you okay with these recommendations? Is this something that calls your attention? Is this something that you see that is conducive to the goals that you want? And if it's a yes, we proceed from there. If it's a no, well, let's study other options. And whether whatever option this person chooses, now this the, here comes the other part of this. I am going to hold you accountable for complying with this new habit that you're forming here. So what you're going to do, you're going to write down in your calendar, what are you doing? You're going to send me a picture that you are actually doing this. And let's say for someone that wants to go to weight loss, that is, that is uh, something that a lot of people are very intimidated with is going to a gym. A gym is a terror world for a lot of people that want to do weight loss. And there's other options for physical activity, not only a gym. There's so many other things that we can do. So with this client, I asked this person, does the gym calls your attention? I'm terrified of the gym. I tried the gym before. I paid for a membership and I wasted my money. Like, well, how about you go to a smaller gym, a more intimate setting, something that it doesn't intimidate you as much as a huge gym where there's hundreds of people. Or how about this? I have another client that she goes to the gym at 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. because there's nobody there. And she feels comfortable there. She can use her machines and she feels comfortable. She feels at ease. And it's about finding those options that people have to make those micro goals become a success. So this big goal, which is an example, losing 10, 20, 30 pounds, it becomes a reality. But in a setting that is conducive, that you that it will help you be consistent because this is what happens with us humans. Once we get out of a comfort zone, inconsistencies can happen because we just don't want to do it. It's like, oh, this, this is too much for me. I'm not going to do it. And we can build a thousand excuses not to do something that we actually need to do. So it's just some of some examples of how great is to have a life coach that can help you with these challenges that otherwise on your own, you will just drop it and let it go and not do anything. And it will have a consequence of frustration, even depression, feeling like you're not good enough, low self-esteem. So it's, it's very, very important. I, I would recommend to anybody and everybody in this world to have a life coach. Definitely. Yeah, I can see how having accountability accountability partner. <laughs> yeah, it okay. really helps. It really helps. I have accountability partners as well. I have mentors. I have accountability partners. You know, just like I am a practicing life coach, a practicing massage therapist, I got to practice what I preach in order to share with you how good this is for people because I practice it. I use it. I receive massage every two weeks. I'm a massage therapist. My job is very, very physical and it can be very emotional because I work in chaotic environments around people that are recovering addicts, are recovering alcoholics in a, in a very, very, uh, it can be a very sad, challenging environment. So I choose to be the calm in the middle of the storm 
of their storm. And how am I going to do that? By practicing what I preach. I do prayer. I do meditation. I exercise a lot of, I mean, I do things that calms my senses down before I go to work so I can be more efficient and help these patients feel better, at least in that moment when I have them on my table. If I go to my job, being stressed out and hysterics is not conducive to what am I supposed to deliver to these patients that all they need is a calming moment in the middle of their storm. So it's something to be very cognizant about how important it is to exercise, calm exercise, uh, do prayer, meditation, relax it. I don't do meditation unless it's a guided meditation, unless I, I hear someone guiding me through the meditation. YouTube is the best, the best platform from any kind of meditation we want to have for any kind of guided prayer as well. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. I highly recommend it to everybody. And if you have Spotify, they have meditation channels as well. They have prayer channels as well. So it's, it's wonderful, all the options that we have out there that we just have to click and, and follow. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Have you ever like came across a situation where helping a client with their problems like gave you clarity on something in your own personal life? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I can give you quite a few stories uh, about different situations. I had this patient, lovely lady, and she was in her late 70s, actually, an elderly woman. She lost her husband over cancer, and she was crying his death for a year and a half. So she will come every single week. She will lay on my table and cry and tell me how much she missed him, how much she loved him, how much she wanted to do more. And as she kept on mourning the loss of her husband. It took me back to the memory of the loss of my father, actually. My father was died violently when I was a very little girl, and there was no form to me to grieve and mourn because I had nobody to grieve and mourn with. I didn't have any support. So through her, I definitely learned that grief is okay, that there's many stages of grief, there's many stages of loss, and there is no time frame to start recovering from the, the, the loss of a beloved person in our lives. And with her, I definitely, we, we started very good conversations, and I didn't even know this, but I was coaching her. And she, as she was sharing her story with me over and over, more details. And as, and as I kept on hearing her with more and more details about her relationship with her husband, that it took her to the beautiful relationship she had with her father, that definitely took me to my own past. And I started, we started sharing different, uh, different stories of our lives and definitely this woman god bless her wherever she is she really helped me through my grief with my own father that died many many years ago i was eight years old when he died i'm in my late 50s now so it's a very long time that passed and mourning my father was a very complicated thing over the years because i was angry at my dad because he left me alone it's like why did he leave it's like no he didn't leave he was taken so it, there was nothing that anybody could do about it but my grief with my father i was on my own i was confused i didn't have any direction when it came to how to grieve how to let things out how to come to someone I, I didn't have anybody to go to with this very confusing time in my life and it took me decades of 
grieving my father. And through this lovely woman, an angel in disguise, she helped me a lot. She, she doesn't even know how much she helped me through my own loss of my father and nowadays definitely you know i honor my father much more than i ever did before and it was thanks to this lovely lady that she helped me more than she know so yeah absolutely what are some things that help you um during the grieving process to kind of stay grounded because i know that's something that a lot of people everyone has to go through mm -hmm. at some point in life um, yes, yes. Well, with, with my father, it was a very complicated matter because I lost him at a very young age. And before my father's death, I didn't I didn't have a clue what death was, what losing someone was. So that was a very complicated situation that lasted for a very, very long time. But afterwards, I... I lost my beloved uncle. He was he was the one that was there for us the most in the midst of my father's passing. And he was my father's brother. So my father had a tragic passing. My uncle had a very tragic passing as well. And the way that I dealt with his loss was a world away from the loss of my father, even though it was a very violent loss that I had. He, he died in a very violent way. He, uh, unfortunately, he didn't deserve the ending that he had for being an elderly man. But with my beloved uncle, especially, I mourn him in a very different way. I grieve his loss in a very different way because I had support. And finding support is vital for being in mourning being in that loss going through that loss don't do it alone do yourself a favor don't do it alone if you don't have family members to support you there are support groups that help grieving why gr grieving widows grieving daughters there are so many platforms and there's so many different help that we can have even through the form of these platforms of social media there's a lot of platforms that i i i research a lot and i go through many platforms it's like what can help who and i use this as reference for my holistic life coaching because there's people that they have challenges right now with certain aspects of their lives but it goes straight back to the violent loss of someone. I know what it feels. I know because I lived it. And I research a lot. I go around looking for looking for help that is like, okay, you need help with this. Maybe this platform can help you. And I write it down or I text it to them. And it's a good guide for them. You know, go to this direction. And if I guide you, to, if I can guide you to the right direction to help you with your loss is a beautiful thing. There's many hospitals that they offer grief therapy. When my kids lost their father, he was a very sick man and he, he died in the hospital. There was a grief therapist and I took it immediately. Immediately, I was like, okay, let's do it. And my kids didn't really feel comfortable about it. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just go once and see if you don't like it. That's fine. I'm here. But there's a lot of help for grief. And don't do it alone. Don't do it alone. There's always someone that had a similar uh, experience with grieving and losing someone. I have lost family members left and right through suicide. My father was killed. My my uncle was killed to uh uh, chronic illnesses like the father of my kids he died of chronic illnesses he had a, a cardiopulmonary shutdown and that was it and he was only 48 years old so been there done that but the way that i have experienced grief from the big loss of my father which was a whole different ball game to grieving the loss of my beloved uncle many years later through helping my kids 
through the loss of their father. And even though we were not together at that time, he was still the father of my kids and he was still a friend and I was there for him. So of course I, I mourned his loss, but I didn't do it alone. And that was the big difference. That was the big difference in my life that helped me through it and, and helped me cope in an easier way in a more, uh, it was a less of a challenge and I felt like I could breathe like, okay, it's, this is normal and it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be frustrated. It's okay because it's part of the grieving process and we have to go through all of those stages of grief and the more informed we are about these stages of grief, the better we will understand what we're going through. And the, and the more we understand that even as sometimes we may think that, oh, I feel so much better. My grief is over. Something may trigger you in an instant and you can go straight back to that grieving process. It's like, oh my God, I thought I was okay. And what is happening? It's normal. It happens and it's okay. Okay, you will be fine. We learn to live with the loss. Bottom line, we learn to live with the loss. And the more we remember this person that is not here with love, compassion, empathy, and good memories, it's a beautiful way to cope. It's a beautiful way to honor the ones that are gone. That is for sure. Yeah, that's definitely important to feel your feelings because i think in in those times people just want to make you happy and it's like no you kind of need to feel your feelings yes you gotta it's feel it you need to feel it. absolutely yeah. absolutely i agree having a healthy support group what no yeah. any situation is any situation a healthy support group can make all the difference in the world if, even if it, if it's from strangers i mean sometimes support groups with full with with all strangers can help you in such a powerful way more than being with family members even it's it's, it's pretty amazing can you talk about your book a little bit what is that an autobiography or more about life coaching it's more of an autobiography. This was this is a co-authorship that I did with 29 different authors from all over the world, different walks of life from all financial statures. And it was a very powerful chapter that I wrote about my life, about my the, the loss of my father, about going down deep down that rabbit hole and coming out through the other side and how our past doesn't define who we are or who we may be and how we can pick up the pieces and have a joyful life if we so choose to do. So that's basically uh, my chapter. And the book is called Impact Leadership with Blanca E. Rodriguez. And it's available on Amazon Kindle and, and in the form of a book. It's a beautiful compilation of stories of people from all over and not just because of my chapter that is really inspiring, but I get inspired with all of the rest of these co-authors that they are pouring their hearts into a chapter of a book. And the interesting thing about writing this chapter, it was, it's like, okay, you have 2000 words to say it all. So I was, wow, no pressure. 2,000 words to say the story, to share my story. And it was very powerful. It was very healing for me because I come from a lot of childhood trauma, from low self-esteem, low self-worth, self-sabotage because of neglect, chronic untreated mental illnesses. I was around a very confusing and consistent world so to speak my mother was chronically ill and back in those days this was back in the 1970s talking about mental illnesses was prohibited it was taboo it was demonized completely 
And it's a whole different ballgame now that there's more openness, there's more open communication, and you can talk about these things freely, which is a beautiful thing. And I'm so, I mean, this fills me up with such joy that it's like, oh my God, finally people can openly speak about different mental illnesses and how mental illness is not really defining people into your life is over like it used to be way back in the day when I was growing up. So my mother had chronic untreated mental illnesses for a very, very long time. And it definitely reflects on the way we grew up. And that was just one of the many things that I spoke of into a 2000 word chapter. So from that all the way to what I am doing now, it's it is a very powerful chapter. I definitely broke my silence of many, many years because everything was back in those days, of course, and with the culture, I'm Puerto Rican, with the culture, it was, you don't talk about dead, you don't talk about mental illnesses. It was that mindset and it was totally wrong. And I was the, I'm the youngest of three siblings. So when my father tragically passed away, oh, she doesn't know. She's a little kid. She doesn't know. She's a little girl. She's a little girl. And that made things so much worse. But in reality, they were trying to do the best they could with the little tools that they had. So I am totally understanding of that. I learned the lesson about that. And this is what we call growing up and making sure that we stop blaming the world for our actions. And yes, I went through many deep, deeply rooted things that can break any human being but that is not an excuse to keep on living a life of obscurity. This, take it as a lesson and grow and help others through your journey. And this is why I'm here in this podcast right now with you sharing and pouring my heart out because I know in my heart that it can help someone out there. And this is something that I wish I had 25, 30 years ago that I could hear it from someone in a, in a podcast, in a program to say, hey, you out there, you that you think that you are in a world of silence, you're not alone. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that can share their silence that where they have been in that world of silence as I did. I was in the world of silence for 47 years of my life. And when I published my chapter, my sister asked me, this really happened? My sister. And my sister is my best friend. We are, I mean, the bond is really strong with us. My brother, he came to me. Why didn't you say anything? I'm like, I don't know, because we were indoctrinated into, Shh, you don't talk about bad things. So this is all I knew. And getting out of that comfort zone that wasn't comfort, comfortable at all, Okay, this is the law of familiarity. We stick to what we know until it's time to move on from that and make a change. And this is the beauty of it. When we change our mindsets, our lives will change. And definitely this chapter changed my life in ways that I had no comprehension of. And I'm very grateful to, for it, definitely. Yeah, I really like the concept of, of the book because it's a collection kind of aimed at the same thing, but you get it, you get the information from different. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, different yeah. perspectives. Yeah, different perspectives and, and different stories. And we yeah. are so similar, even though we have never met each other. Mm -hmm. People from Australia, or from England, it's like, I never met you, but I relate to what you're saying. I relate to your story and we definitely do relate to each other. And it's very, very powerful. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. And you definitely have a chapter in this podcast. I really appreciate um, you being very um, vulnerable and open about your situations because that is essentially why I do this podcast is, you know, to kind of talk about 
uh, the comfortable and uncomfortable topic so that, you know, people can learn from others. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very important for the listeners to understand that you're not alone. You're mm-hmm. not alone. And in any way that I can help through my story, in any way can, I mean, because we, you and I, we share a purpose and is to help others improve their quality of life through the form of a podcast, through the form of me being a guest and spreading the word that, hey, this is possible. Change is possible. You can heal. You can move on from this. Don't forget where you come from. No, don't forget where you come from, but don't let that define your whole existence. Just because this happened to you, you use it as a lesson, as a lesson for improvement, as a lesson to help others. Make this uh, make this uh, mission that is bigger than yourself and what happened to you. And, and definitely this is this is a big part of it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, Blanca, um, thank you for um, gracing us with your presence um, and your wonderful insights. Is there anything you want to leave the listeners with um, before we close it out? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to tell the listeners that we don't face trauma by running away from it. We face trauma by confronting it. And even though it's getting out of our comfort zones, which are the comfort is not there at all, you will come out, you will blossom into the other side, and you will say to yourself, thank you. Thank you for facing these situations, facing the challenges, because I promise you, if you work on yourself much more than you do in any other job in this world, you will definitely go through the other side with a big smile on your face and saying, yeah, I remember who I used to be, but I'm much better where I am now. That is a fact. And for the listeners, we'll have uh, Blanca's information in the description and links to all her information and books and all of that. Um, as always, you can find us on any podcast platform. If you would like to be a guest on the podcast, you can email americangypsy at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Peace. Thank you. <laughs>